All right, so I'm like rushing home today from work because uh, according to the tracking number that partially got lost by TNT, uh, a package has been delivered to my house. I'm not sure how that would happen because apparently I've signed for it, uh, but I'm very excited. The only downside being is that it appears that TNT have just left what is $24,000 or $25,000 worth of engine sitting in my driveway. So yeah, fuck you very much TNT, but uh, really excited to unwrap this thing. unwrapped so we'll just check it out make sure everything's all right can't remember who built these what this uh, particular engine um, any clues please let me know in the comments uh, all looks to be as you'd expect obviously there's no water pump here because I'm gonna have my electric water pump so there'll actually be a manifold on the front there all looks to have made it through okay uh, in terms of transport, despite uh, the best efforts from TNT, Higgins race heads there, obviously CNC ported heads. Um, all, all looks like it, it's as it should be. We can obviously see this is pretty cool here. Um, let me see if this will bring this back up. You can see all the CNC porting there for the valves, which is pretty cool. Um, well, drunk camera. Well, that wasn't what I meant to do, but let's go to this aspect. All right, doing its job. I uh, will obviously have to mount the, uh, the the oil feed there, which will actually just replace this for, for the accu sump as well, uh, and do a few little modifications, but otherwise it's, it's pretty much looking, looking good. <laughs> Hi everyone, sorry it's been a couple of weeks since my last video, but uh, unfortunately work has to take precedence uh, given that I need the money to be able to afford to play with cars. I've also managed to fit in a little bit of car racing as you can see, which was which was quite a bit of fun. Uh, and I've managed to spec and order the, the project that's going to follow on from the Ultima uh, and be the build that'll, that'll go from, go from I guess, uh, March or April when I have this on its wheels and, and sort of somewhat finished forward. Uh, obviously my very expensive tennis ball holder has turned up and I'm really pleased with that, which is great. And the chassis is the right way up again. So uh, look, I thought I was gonna have time to actually get the side bins in and, and do a few other things, but we might just uh, run over, I guess, the motor spec now that it's here. And I'll, I'll put up a video of the dyno and talk about the numbers for it. Um, as I say, I haven't had much other time. Uh, by the time you start to run, I run a couple of these race cars in the end because my I gave my old MX-5 to my dad to run. And uh, you know, you'll see down here, <clears throat> by the time you run a couple of race cars, you sort of end up with uh, a fair few bits and pieces that you've, you've got to sort of transport deal with. I think I've tried almost every tire manufacturer by now, uh, to finding out what I like and you know, a variety of things, everything from slicks to R specs to what you would call, I guess, ultra high performance tires now. Unfortunately, uh, well, I might actually do a tire video at some point. Uh, all of the, the motoring journos in Australia seem to have a bit of an affliction where they go to one of the tire shops and get only what they can provide in their range. So you sort of get two high performance tires and a whole heap of crap. Um, Thank, thankfully I've had the opportunity on, on sort of a pretty good yard stick being an MX-5 to, to try a few different ones, find out what, what ones work really well, uh, what ones wear well, what ones are cost effective, uh, you know, even everything down to these RSRs, which we have a Hyundai XL racing series in Australia, which is a great format for people to get into racing relatively cheaply and uh, now use a car that would, I, I suppose if you grew up and you were my age, you, you knew that they were used pretty much as a bedroom exclusively. Uh, when you're when you're in high school and now they've been turned into race cars so guys can learn racecraft and, and have a bit of fun um, and yeah look 
you know, I don't have a lot of a lot of experience with slicks, but I can give you the basics. You know, just like how to read tread wear indicators and stuff like that, and and how to, I guess, measure your car and set temperature, set pressures, and and uh, sort of read temperature and read wear so that you can. I guess maybe apply that to your car. Anyhow, that'll be a future video, but I thought I'd just mention it now that I have sort of 20 odd tires. There's another, I think 12 or 16 downstairs in the other garage, uh, the Nanking AR1s and I've got some AO50s and a couple of other things. So there's pros and cons to each, but look, we might stay stick to uh, having a chat about this one, which I think is starting to look pretty bloody awesome. I love these Genvy ITBs. The drive-by-wire actually sits down the center there uh, in the middle of the valley. So I'll, I'll rig all of that up at some stage and, and show you how that all works. It's gonna be gonna be pretty cool. And I'll be 3D printing my airbox, which actually will, uh, the plate will sit here be between the trumpet and the top of the, the throttle body itself. Um, and then we'll be utilizing the, the roof scoop uh, to suck air straight into two big k and panel filters. Uh, and feed straight into the top there, which I think is going to look pretty pretty wicked. It's not an off-the-shelf item, so I'm going to 3D print it and uh, probably then use that as a mould to, to build it out of carbon fibre uh, and, and hopefully get all that to uh, be as good as it possibly can be. I think there's no better way to get cool air into these Ultimas than straight out of the roof scoop and um, feed it right into the top of the motor. Uh, as you can see there, that's what the carbon looks like. Obviously, it looks a bit rubbish with this plastic on there, but I'm going to leave that on there until I absolutely have to take it off. Uh, anyhow, that's that's sort of it for the moment. Uh, we might we might have a chat about the the numbers that this motor made and and have a look at the dyno video and I guess that might help anyone else who's looking to spec something similarly and, and uh, see what what's sort of involved. Quick tip here, just when you're trimming carbon fiber, obviously uh, you're going to do a bit of a rough cut with the you know a grinder or something like that. And yes, today I'm going to be using a Dremel. Thank you to everyone who thought that I didn't own one and seemed to be either a salesman for them or, or pretending to be. I, I do have one and I do like them. I just like to do things by hand because it's a bit <clears throat> more careful and I am a, a bit of a, uh, a bit anal in terms of making sure that I don't want to take any material out of this chassis or make any mistakes, which power tools tend to be a bit more susceptible to. So I'm just using a, a steel ruler as a guide and I'm just going to use the drum sanding bit on the Dremel just to run along the edge here and just take off that final final bit so that it matches up exactly to the chassis. Um, what I'll do then is I'm just going to, again, go back and just hand sand the last final bit just to make sure that it fits exactly uh, before I put the rib nuts in and, and mount the floor section in. So anyway, I'll, I'll do a quick time lapse for that, but ultimately you'll see the um, the end, end result. Of it. <laughs> cutting with a power tool like this one thing just to be aware of we obviously don't want to damage the the chassis uh, which I've put some protective tape on but regardless <clears throat> when we're cutting it and make sure you're not angling the tool like this but you actually want to angle the tool just like this and run along this edge I've allowed a little bit of fat that I'm just going to take off with the with uh, by hand sanding in the end anyway but I know if I do it like this even if I slip or make any error all it's going to do is just take some some meat out of this uh, crappy you know 10 buck ruler instead of uh, taking the nice paint off my chassis. But just one one tip, you know, always angling your, your, your cutting blade away from something if you are if you are cutting something that actually matters to you uh, is, is a good tip that I've found anyway. Finished floor section, well, almost finished. Uh, I haven't put in the bash plate to the sump guard because I'm gonna wait until I actually install the, the uh, motor as much as it'll be a bit painful to be doing that stuff from underneath the car. Uh, it is what it is, I still think it's the best option. And also the rear uh, sort of jacking points, I was gonna install those, but I seem to be missing one and the dogs look pretty guilty in terms of uh, having stolen that and burying it in the, gar in the garden. So uh, otherwise we're all sweet. This stuff, this stuff's all in for the belly pan. Got jacking points at the front, central jacking point, and uh, the splitter's in in place. So I'm going to remove that, obviously, for flipping the chassis, and, and it won't go back on until a bit later. But uh, there it is, all there.
right, so that's what the motor produced. Uh, obviously, it's about 638 odd horsepower and about 740 newton meters at uh, 6,800 RPM. That's with an AFR of 12.5 and also about 24 degrees of timing. Um, you know, give or take a few a few Isaacs or Shetland ponies. Um, it's on a relatively sort of middle range cam. I think it's uh, 246, 254. Uh, lift and I think it's about 111 degrees uh, separation there so in that sense that's, that's probably sort of middle of the range uh, a sort of mild specification it'll be interesting to see uh, how we go when it gets to emissions um, there are a couple of things that you can do in that regard just in terms of running it on E85 instead of running it on standard 98 and also tuning it just so it's, it's uh, you know as efficient as it can be uh, so we'll look at that when we get to it um, it is something that I had in mind when I did spec this motor but look, I'm really happy with the numbers. I, I, I sort of thought 600 horsepower was about, about a good number for this car. And, and we've got a little bit extra from that. And I probably expect we'll make another 35 to 40 with these ITBs uh, when we do the final tune. I, I like to keep things a, a touch conservative because in the real world you do have uh, certain things like you know ambient temperatures that, that might be you know pretty unkind to intake air temps or, or uh, even fuel that isn't, isn't a known quantity to you. So you need to take that stuff into account. I mean, obviously the ECU does have its safeties in there uh, to deal with that stuff, but you don't want to be 100% reliant on that. So much the better that if you consider that from the get go and, and, and it's never a problem at all. So you don't even have to, you don't even have to deal with it. Anyhow, that's it. Look, really happy with it. Uh, can't wait to get the thing in the car and, and actually hear how it sounds with the ITBs and, and see how it performs in the end. But look, seems pretty good. Obviously the, the guys who built the motor uh, made a pretty good estimate when they suggested 640 was the number that I was looking at with the specification uh, and, and they've been pretty good to deal with in terms of getting the, getting the whole job done and, and meeting the, the spec that I wanted. So anyhow, we'll leave it at that uh, until the next video.